Today we're going to be talking about the EPC Driller Second Secondary and probably one of the more interesting weapons in Deep Rock as well as one of the more I guess controversial weapons or at least there's a lot of different takes on the EPC. Some people think that it's really really good, some people think that it's really really bad, some people find it kind of clunky and I kind of agree with all of those because I've played this quite a bit and I've used it in a lot of different ways and some ways it can feel kind of clunky. The EPC does feel pretty clunky when you first get into it as well as if you try to go for the EPC mining, which we're going to talk about in this, that is really difficult to get used to. So let's go over each one of its overclocks, a build that I'd recommend for it, a way I would recommend you play it, and then also a primary weapon that it pairs really well with. So our very first overclock is the Persistent Plasma. Persistent Plasma is an unstable overclock that is pretty strong. Whenever you use a charge shot and your charge hut hits anything, this puts plasma in the area. This covers a pretty large area and this deals damage to anything that walks inside of it as well as slows it down. The downside to this overclock is that you lose out on damage, but that usually doesn't matter because so long as the plasma ball itself has hit and dealt some damage, usually you've made up for that amount of damage. The slowdown on it is also really nice. The way I usually build persistent plasma is like this, a straight two build. In tier one, I usually take more ammo. Usually don't need damage on this, either AOE damage or more regular damage ammo I find to be the best use for it as well as I'm building this for an EPC mining build. We'll talk about that once we get down to the tier 5. In tier 2, both of these options are pretty good. I like taking the faster charge shot. This is for normal shots, not for the actual uh, fully charged shot. In tier 3, we're going to faster charge up. I like taking this one or the more ammo efficient mod in tier 3. Either one is good. I like the faster charge up because it lets me fight a little bit quicker with this. But if you're just using this for a mining build, then the uh, more ammo can be more useful so you can use that more often. In tier 3, I'm going with even more ammo so we can use the charge shots even more so but extra AOE can work pretty well on this one too if you don't want to use this as a mining build. And then in tier 5, I would recommend the Thin Containment Field. Thin Containment Field is basically its own kind of overclock in the EPC because it does change the weapon quite a bit. With Thin Containment Field, you can fire out a charge shot and then if anything hits that charge shot, it will explode dealing damage in a very large area and it will also cut away at all the ground in the area. This is how you can mine with the EPC. Now in order to do this, it can be very difficult and it does take timing because usually you want to fire this out with the EPC and then shoot it yourself, which means you can't overheat the EPC on the actual charge shot, so you do have to get the timing down. It's a little bit easier if you practice with a friend, maybe a friend playing scout and using the GK2 so that you can just fire this next to materials and then they can shoot it, which makes it so this is very, very useful as a utility role just for mining as well as very useful in a combat role because this does massive damage and this just counts as flat damage towards everything. So you're going to hit that hard regardless of what you're fighting, which is really, really nice against basically everything you can kill things very very quickly with this and even if you don't hit those thin containment fields to do a lot of damage the persistent plasma itself can linger and deal quite a bit of damage over time so this becomes very very useful in regular fights if you find that this is still kind of clunky or you don't really want to build for this i would recommend the burning nightmare in tier 5 which is a little bit awkward with this particular overclock but it can work pretty well and then the other option in tier 5 with the plasma splash i would never recommend it is just a very mediocre mod, especially compared to the other two in tier 5. Now to pair with this, I paired it with Sticky Fuel on the Flamethrower, which is a fantastic overclock. It makes it so you can just have lingering flames that last a really long time. I usually like to build them for extra duration, so they last something like 11 or 12 seconds. This can get you a lot of value against crowds, and this build is very strong against crowds. You can slow them down with the Sticky Flames, you can slow them down on top of that with the Persistent Plasma. Another way that's really fun to build this is full slowdown build with the sludge pump. It is really funny to pair this with disperser compound and neurotoxin grenades and get like a 90% slowdown on stuff. Things just come at you at an extreme crawl and it can be really strong for a team. Moving on to our second overclock, we're going to be using overcharger. Overcharger is the other unstable overclock for the EPC and this one makes it so whenever you use a charge shot, it does more damage. However, it consumes more ammo and it can overheat a little bit easier. To make up for that, I'm going to be building the EPC like this. So in tier one, I'm taking extra ammo just so that we can use this more often. You could go with extra AOE damage. In tier two, I'm taking the faster cooling. This one just helps a lot so that we're not overheating the overcharger a lot because it is very easy to accidentally overheat this. Not that that matters so much because I really wouldn't recommend using thin containment filled with this one. It's really not good for mining because it's just not ammo efficient enough compared to some of your other options. In tier three, I'm going with the improved charge efficiency. This makes it so we consume two less ammo. So we go back down to the normal amount of ammo that we usually consume when using charge shots from the EPC. 
helps this go a really long way. You could go with faster charge up shots with this too, or less heat generation. Both of those are pretty good too. In tier four, I usually go with more ammo, although more AOE in this one is pretty fun too. That way you can just hit more things, but more ammo makes it so I can use this more often. And then in tier five, I would highly recommend to take the burning nightmare. Like I said, thin containment field really doesn't work very well for this because it's not ammo efficient enough compared to some of the other options you could do for mining. And the plasma splash is just not worth it because you don't get any bonus to regular shots and that's the only way you're going to get more plasma splash damage. Now overcharger can work really well against crowds, especially in tight areas where you can fire this through. I decided to take a primary weapon that's good for single target damage and good at range. For this, I took Sludge Blast on the Sludge Pump, a very fun overclock. However, this particular build can run through ammo really fast, but it will kill a lot of things really quickly. So if you can do the mission fast, this build will help carry you all the way to the end. For our third overclock, we have Heavy Hitter. Heavy Hitter is probably the most straightforward overclock for the EPC, and it's a lot of people's favorite for the EPC. It's very, very simple. This just makes it so you have less ammo, but more damage. You can also overheat a little bit faster with the EPC, but your normal shots do a lot more damage, doing about double damage, and this is really good if you want to put fire on this too, because fire triggers based on the amount of damage that you have. So with this, you only need to shoot your sludge twice to light it on fire, which can be really useful, saves a little bit of ammo overall. It's also just really convenient for picking off enemies at a distance. The way I like to build heavy hitters like this, very straightforward. In tier one, I go with more damage. This is so that we can have the two shots to light sludge on fire if you want to take that with the sludge pump. Even if you don't, this still gets you 40 base damage, which is very high for a secondary weapon and makes it so you can build up heat really quick on robots or so that you can do a little bit more damage at a distance to pick off things like web and acid spitters. In tier two, I'm going with a faster shot velocity. This just makes it so I don't need to lead my shots as much. In tier three, I'm going with a faster cooldown. Again, the other two options are more for charge shots and we're not really gonna be using charge shots for the heavy hitter. It's just not worth it compared to the regular shots. This one's the best and it makes it so you can continually fight over a longer period of time. In tier four, again, ammo is kind of our best option here because we don't need AOE and we don't need more AOE damage from the splash. More ammo just kind of helps us more with this one and it puts it back up to about the same amount of ammo that we would have normally. And then in tier five, I would highly recommend Burning Nightmare. Plasma Splash does kind of work with this one because it can potentially one shot swarmers. That's not a huge breakpoint for you to build for though, a driller. Driller's primary weapons destroy swarmer swarms without any issue. I would just recommend the fire on this. That way you can light your sludge on fire or you can do a little bit more damage towards robots. And of course, you can always just put more status effects on enemies. I decided to pair this with improved thermal efficiency for the cryo cannon. Clean overclock that gets us more ammo. And it also makes it so the cryo cannon doesn't overheat as quickly, which is great. This particular build is actually a thermal shock build where you can either freeze things with the cryo cannon and then light it on fire with the EPC. Or you can do the opposite, light something on fire and then freeze it so that it takes the thermal shock. You can do a lot of damage with this and this build does work very well against crowds. It's also fairly ammo efficient. You can use the EPC at longer ranges to take out threats like leeches, tri jaws, menaces, anything like that. And then use the cryo cannon up close and combine it with your drills, especially if you're running uh, melee oriented drills. You can clear up crowds super quick with this. For our fourth overclock, we have Heat Pipe. Heat Pipe is the other balanced overclock for the EPC, and this one is kind of a wonky overclock. It's probably one of my favorites, although it is difficult to use. So Heat Pipe makes it so that you're more ammo efficient with your charge shots, as well as your charge shots come out much faster. However, you can overheat the EPC way quicker than you could otherwise, and it is very difficult to get the timing down with this one. It has the tightest amount of timing out of any of the overclocks if you want to use it for EPC mining but it is technically the best in terms of ammo efficiency if you can use it competently. That being said, it is really difficult to get the timing down, so I always screw this one up whenever I go back to it. The way I usually like to build it is like this. So in tier one, I'm taking extra ammo. That way I can use it for mining more often, but any of them in tier one are pretty good. Tier two, I would highly recommend that you take the less heat generation. This one really, really helps. If you don't have it, your timing gets even shorter than it already is and it is split second timing as to when you need to fire this before it will overheat your EPC. In tier three, I like the faster charge up. This makes it very, very quick. It makes it so your charge up is almost instant. Although if you don't like this one, you could also go with either of the other two options in tier three. They're both pretty good for heat pipe. In tier four, we're going with extra ammo. That way we can just use this more often. And then in tier five, we're going with thin containment field. I did pair it with a primary weapon that is much easier to use than this one and pretty reliable. And that is volatile impact mixture with a sludge pump. This one is just absolutely fantastic. Lets you have high single target damage, lets you just eat away crowds, and it does massive damage towards dreadnoughts, which is fantastic. Then you can just practice using the EPC so that you can kind of get 
more used to the timing with this particular overclock. For a fifth overclock, we're using magnetic cooling unit. This is a clean overclock that increases your cooling as well as it makes it so your heat doesn't build up as quickly with the EPC. This one is probably the best overclock for you to start learning how to EPC mine with. However, I would consider it probably the worst overclock for the EPC once you are competent with using EPC mining because it's only really good for that role of teaching you how to do it. So if you do have this overclock and you want to start learning how to EPC mine, I would highly recommend that you use this. That way you can get the timing down. The window of error is much, much larger, so you don't really need to worry about overheating this too often. It's almost like training wheels for the, uh, the EPC mining itself. It's just, it's really nice to have. The way I like to build it is like this, same way I was building heat pipe. So in tier one, I'm taking extra ammo. That way you can use it for mining more often. Same thing goes with tier four. In tier two, I would recommend the cooling for this, although both of them in tier two are pretty good. In tier three, I'm going with a faster charge time, although you could go with more ammo efficiency here too. Both are good. I like the faster charge time because I can just mine a little bit quicker with it, as well as it does help out a little bit more in combat. And then in tier five, I'm using thin containment field so we can actually mine with this. Like I said, this is the best overclock to start learning EPC mining on. It makes it by far the easiest and it makes it the least frustrating out of any of them. So give this one a shot, try it out, go into maps, whether you're playing solo or multiplayer, and just try to mine stuff with it. It doesn't even need to be rare materials. You can use it to try to mine gold, to try to mine nitra. You can also just use it to mine like stalactites or just other weird things around the map, just anything that you want to clear out. It makes it far easier for you to learn how the hitboxes work of the EPC, of where you need to aim so that you don't accidentally blow this up next to you, and how far away you can accurately shoot this, as well as it does kind of help you with your depth perception, because the longer and the further away those shots are to try to mine, the more and more difficult it's going to be. And then for a primary weapon with this, I decided to pair it with compact feed valves for the flamethrower. Very simple flamethrower overclock that's basically just a straight upgrade. You get a lot more ammo, you get slightly shorter range, but that doesn't matter. You can just go with longer reach in tier one and then you've made up for it and you can just keep trying to use this for mining. Well, the flamethrower will just carry you as a weapon throughout basically any mission. And then for a final overclock, we have energy rerouting, the other clean overclock for the EPC. This one is a fantastic overclock that can actually be built however you'd like. It's a really, really strong overclock because it just gets you more ammo and a faster charge speed. So whether you like using regular shots or charge shots, this one's really good. The way I have it built again is a simple two build. This is for mining, but you could build it for fire the same way that we built a heavy hitter for fire if you'd like that. You could build it for an all AOE charge shot. Anything works with this particular overclock. So once again, tier one ammo so that we have more shots. Tier two, faster moving projectile so we can use it for regular shots. Tier three, faster charge speed so that we can use it for mining a little bit quicker, but any of them in tier three would be really good. Tier four, more ammo, and then tier five, thin containment filled. Build this however you would like. It's just a straight upgrade to the EPC. Then for a primary weapon, I decided to pair this with Ice Storm. This is an unstable overclock for the cryo cannon. lets you do really, really high damage towards everything. And even though this doesn't have the most amount of ammo, that's usually okay because our EPC at least built this way. We have a ton of bullets for it. And these were the builds that I used with the EPC. This was loadouts done quick for the EPC. We still have the microwave gun for Driller, which we'll be talking about shortly. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. Tell me what your favorite loadouts and builds and overclocks and all that good stuff are down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.